Hi, I'm Brett Simpson from Simpson Limited Collector Firearms, and today I would like to talk about my favorite gun in the shop. This was the Johnson rifle that was issued to Captain Robert Dunlap, and he won the Medal of Honor on Iwo Jima with this rifle. I first met Robert Dunlap when he was a teacher at Warren High School. I was a student there, and he ended up being my junior high math teacher in seventh and eighth grade. And at the time, I really didn't appreciate how important of a person that he was. I was young, I didn't understand the Medal of Honor, I didn't know that much about World War II, but uh, I knew he was a very respected guy in school, and I always remember everybody feared getting in trouble from him because behind his desk, he had a big wood paddle and uh, he had actually drilled holes in it so that he could get more speed with that paddle. And every once in a while, you'd be in class and you'd hear somebody in the hallway, you'd hear that whack, and you'd know that he was paddling somebody. Dunlap went to Monmouth College and he graduated in 1942 before joining the Marine Corps. So when he enlisted, he went through training and he came out as a captain. And he later went to Guadalcanal and Bougainville. Returned home for a short visit before he went back and ended up uh, going to Iwo Jima where he won the Medal of Honor. And what happened was his, he was captain of a group of guys that were on the front line and he saw the opportunity. He saw a Japanese soldier retreating and Dunlap was a little guy. And, he, and he, they, everybody on the island, he said, was just covered in ash and just black in color. So he thought he kind of looked like a Japanese soldier. And if he acted like a Japanese soldier and kind of assumed the same walk and, and uh, you know, gait, he was able to follow this guy for 200 yards before they realized he wasn't one of them. And then they started shooting at him. Well, he was within 50 yards of enemy lines and he was able to jump in a hole uh, there were shell holes all over and they were black ash so if you threw a grenade in it would sink into the ash and uh, if a shell came in it would go into the ash and there were times I remember him telling war stories in, in school where he said that you'd be in, a, in a, one of the bomb craters and something would come in and it would go down far enough into the ash and it would explode and it would blow him up into the air and he'd come back down. But it actually protected him from the shrapnel. Anyway, he was out front, 200 yards out front of the front American line to where he could see the best Japanese artillery positions. And he stayed there for two days and two nights and was able to direct artillery to where able the, the Americans were able to take out those main positions because of his direction. And it was that that he received the Medal of Honor for. Another story that, that uh, Mr. Dunlap liked to tell in class, of course he got the medal from uh, Harry Truman, but there is a dinner at the White House, I believe annually, but uh, the president hosts Medal of Honor winners 
and there aren't that many of them. You know, many of the guys who won the Medal of Honor did not live to survive the experience. And so the White House has dinners. And when we were in high school, he said that he had had dinner with every president up to that point. Now this was, I graduated in 1984. So of course that was Reagan. He had, he had had dinner with him, with Carter, with Ford, with Nixon, with Kennedy, all the way back to Truman, Eisenhower, of course. And that was one thing he was proud of. When I first met him, he was in a wheelchair. That wound, you know, he would have a surgery and then, you know, when something went wrong, he'd be back in a wheelchair and they could do a surgery and fix it. So, you know, for, for much of his life, he was in and out of, of a wheelchair from that injury. And I remember later him walking and I remember him later being in a wheelchair again. So that injury, you know, between the surgeries that he had to have to correct whatever was going wrong, he was in and out of a wheelchair, as I recall, for the rest of his life. And I think, I think, you know, he retired and I didn't see him for years, but uh, I think at that point he was pretty much out of a wheelchair. I think the, the technology, the surgical technology got to the point where they were able to vastly improve his mobility.